Fluidics is the art and science of controlling flows of liquids and gases. Microfluidics is the art and science of controlling very small flows. It allows for lab on a chip machines that are very inexpensive and allow chemical or biological sensing without transport to a laboratory, much like a home COVID test. Microfluidic control is increasingly important in global health and miniature applications, such as cooling computer chips. A valve is a fundamental mechanism that controls the flow of a fluid. A one-way valve, or check valve, allows a fluid to flow in one direction but stops it from flowing the other way. A passive valve does not require control electronics. A passive check valve can be made from a flap or ball pressed against a seat. Two check valves and a piston form a positive displacement pump, another fundamental machine for fluidics. As such physical devices are scaled down, they become harder to manufacture, eventually becoming MIMS devices or nanomachines. Making a very small flap valve with a moving part is relatively difficult. Is it possible to build a passive check valve that has no solid moving parts? No such valve has ever been described in the literature or in a patent. I did not believe it was possible until I did it. Ferrofluid is usually mineral oil containing tiny particles of ferrite that have been coated with a wax to prevent clumping. You can buy it for about $10 an ounce. It becomes a magnetic fluid when it is um, in a magnetic field. It is fun to play with and has been featured in movies and YouTube videos. A, bob of, a blob of ferrofluid, called a bolus, tends to stay together when in a magnetic field because it is attracted to itself. If you place a ferrofluid bolus in a magnetic field, it will form a liquid mass that seeks to equalize the magnetic field everywhere on the surface. An experiment you can perform easily with a magnet, ferrofluid, and a hypodermic syringe is to observe that ferrofluid in a magnetic field exerts a pressure on non-magnetic material, such as a bubble of air, pushing it away from the strongest part of the field and out of the bolus. If only there were a way to smuggle a bit of water or water or air into a bolus, then it would be forced out with no additional energy required. Yet a bolus in a symmetric field is completely symmetric. Furthermore, by Pascal's law, the pressure in a closed vessel is the same at every infinitesimal area. How then can we hope to make an asymmetric check valve? Would it not be surprising if such a thing were possible? But it is. Suppose we place a thin channel, called the inlet, into a bolus and end it at the strongest point of a magnetic field inside the bolus, whose surface opens onto the outlet. Then if you blow hard enough into the inlet channel, eventually air will go out the channel and bubble away. The pressure needed to do this is called the cracking pressure and is characteristic of all check valves, even steel flap valves. If you do the same thing from the, other, from the outlet side, the fluid will be forced into the channel. As you blow more and more into the outlet, eventually the blowers will be, com be forced completely into the channel, at which point the bolus will collapse with a little spurt, destroying the ability to resist pressure. All check valves have a collapsed pressure as well, but in a steel valve, it would be thousands of times greater than the cracking pressure. In an ideal valve, the cracking pressure would be zero and the collapsed pressure would be infinite. Can we organize the geometry of our bolus, magnetic field, channel, and inlet, and outlet ports, so that the cracking pressure is significantly less than the collapsed pressure? It turns out that you can. By making the bolus smaller than the majority of the magnetic field, your bolus can act as a counterweight to itself. That is, the potential energy increases as the fluid is driven out of the channel inward towards the center of the field. But the displaced fluid is, taken up, is taking up space in a magnetic field which is nearly as strong, thus nearly decreasing the potential energy proportionately. The result is that it takes very little force, and therefore very little pressure, to evacuate the channel and produce a bubble. However, when pressure is high on the outlet port, this does not happen because the thin channel causes most of the displaced ferrofluid to quickly be driven far away from the magnetic field entirely, neither adding nor subtracting to the total potential energy. The surprising result is that the pressure required to collapse the bolus is about 10 times higher than the pressure needed to crack the valve. Thus we have the world's first workable passive check valve that has no moving solid parts. We have measured a cracking pressure of less than 10 centimeters of water and a collapse pressure of more than 100 centimeters of water, which are very low by industrial standards, but similar to human breathing and blood pressures, which may be more than adequate for microfluidics. This project has four goals. 
3D print the valve at different scales to answer the question. How will the valve perform when scaled down to micro and nano scale, such as needed for lab on a chip applications? Two, build two valves in series and measure the performance of the system to see if overall performance can be improved that way. Three, create a pump by making a solid state ferrofluid piston that varies the volume between two valves, thus making the world's first practical positive displacement pump with no moving solid parts. Four, additional work is possible in clarifying the theory and testing proposed improvements in design, such as using two magnets in an air gap configuration. If you would like to try to contribute to this project, please contact me, Robert L. Reed, at read.robert at gmail.com, and let's see if we can carry this public invention uh, project forward. Um, you can join Joe Hirschberger and myself and Asmi Shursat on working on this project.